Hello, everybody. My name is Kai.、Uh, my Chinese name is Zhuang Kai Hua. I go by the pronouns he, him. I'm an engineer、uh, with computing as ex- my expertise. I'm an educator. I'm a comic artist. I draw these cartoons you're seeing. I'm a professor at the Lausanne School of Engineering at York University, at the Department of Electrical Engineering and Computer Science. And、uh, with that, I really like to welcome you to Lausanne, to Lausanne School of Engineering, and to university as a whole. Today, we're going to talk about well what we're here to do. University is many things, but at its heart, it's a place of learning.、Uh, so. I want to have with you a conversation about learning.、Uh, what I like to do is to share five different perspectives on what is learning and why we learn. Our goal is to broaden horizon, broaden your horizons, by、uh, introduce you to different perspectives, new perspectives, to offer guidance from our、uh, past experience, my and others, and also provide inspiration for you、uh, on your learning journeys. So we'll get right into it. The first perspective I want to share is that learning in university is really about two things: it's about professional studies, as well as growth as people, right? So if you're at La Salle, most likely you're an engineering student or a computer science student. I know there are some、uh, digital media students and some other similar pro- smaller programs like that, but majority of students are engineers. Are computer scientists and、uh, and or learning to be engineers or computer scientists, or you're you're learning an expertise. You're learning to be a part of a profession. As people, we all come to university and we, we learn throughout our lives. I mean, university is really a place of growth, right? And、uh, so, to us, growth as people really means two things: is building the basis. For us to thrive as people, as individuals, and as a, as a community, but also the idea of global citizenship. How do we be a part of a global community, and、uh, if we want to be broader than that, planetary citizenship? One thing that's often,、uh, whether we see misunderstood or neglected to talk about, is that really we we focus on either professional development or human development or personal development as. Separate things, but these are very much interconnected、uh, realm of the development, right? As we grow as professionals, we grow as people, and、uh, we cannot grow as good professionals if we don't grow as people. And、uh, and for us, really, what we expect out of our、uh, Lasang graduate is that, well, this idea of planetary and global citizenship plus professional competence, right? These are two areas. Uh, you would be focusing on your learning.、Uh, well, that's what we see as good Lasan graduate. The second perspective I want to share is that there's really two approaches to learning: depth learning and breadth learning. So depth learning is really about focusing; it's about becoming a specialist. Breadth learning is really about variety, which is really about being well-rounded, right? And、uh, So from when you kind of imagine this、uh, from left to right, we have technical learning on the depth side.、Uh, this is your engineering expertise. This is your computer coding. This is your algorithm and computer structure. This is your、uh, if you're civil engineer, maybe this is calculating a stress on a bridge,、uh, calculus, right? The math. These are your technical learnings, and they're absolutely incredibly valuable. That's the Bread and butter of what you do. Then there's transferable skills, and we're moving a bit toward from depth, out of depth towards breadth. Right. This is your communication skills. This is your how to work with people, how to work with teammates, work with bosses, work with clients. How do you write a report? Right. How do you make a presentation? These things are really crucial for you. Well, to be a good professional. Right, and in the professional environment, we need these transferable skills. And、uh, it doesn't matter if、uh, what specific they're called transferable, because、uh, it's applicable regardless of your specific expertise. Right. Then we go really on the breadth side. There's humanistic learnings. Right. When you see the images they're representing, you think about art. You think about music. You think about movement or dance or yoga. 
right? I personally am a martial artist, right? You're thinking about financial literacy, um, how to manage your personal finances, right? And uh, all of these things, uh, well, they're not only useful, they're part of who we are as people, right? More than that, it's not just kind of the skills and knowledge, but it's also the people that we meet. Um, at York University, it's an incredible environment with so many different people, which expose us to very different perspectives, right? D different way people look at the world, and that becomes a, a, a real wealth of a kind, right? That really broadens our perspective. And finally, uh, the context of what's going on in the world, and that really provides the context to what we do as uh, computer scientists, as engineers, as uh, uh, digital media experts, and uh, whoever, whatever other uh, expertise you'll be developing here at LaSalle, right? And also what we really want to be doing is well, develop to be technically competent, but also well-rounded people, right? We want to combine depth and breadth learning. We want both. And uh, I want to share a very famous story here, right? Steve Jobs, which who is the founder of Apple, very famously took a calligraphy class at Reed College, right? And um, where he learned about topography, he learned about what made lettering beautiful. And uh, Steve Jobs was already a tech guy when he chose to take this calligraphy class. And, and he kind of knew, you know, this was not very, quote unquote, useful for him at the time. Right. And, and often uh, we are told this story of, you know, pick something that's useful to learn. But Steve actually did the opposite. Right. This is definitely on the very much the breath side. And he had no idea what to do with it for 10 years. But 10 years later, calligraphy very much became the inspiration and one of the basis for the Macintosh. Right. And uh, the original Macintosh was the very first computer with a graphical interface. Right, it had Windows. Mac had the Windows before Windows had the Windows. Right, is these overlaying boxes that we're all very used to. It had the mouse, which uh, really revolutionized how we interact with computers. Prior than that, it was all keyboard, and uh, and then topography, different fonts, which we take very much to granted now, but uh, back then was a revolutionary idea. Right, so this very much. Um, breadth knowledge of calligraphy really was the inspiration for well, what we see as modern computer interface, right? It, what Steve did was combining his technical expertise with his well-roundedness, and that led to a significant contribution, right? And, and I want to point that out is if we want to make significant contribution, mo more than likely, this is the formula, right? So at Lausanne and at York, um, you're going to have your technical courses. You're going to have your uh, professional development courses. Technical courses where you have your technical learnings and professional development courses uh, have your transferable skills developed, right? And there is complementary studies that and extracurricular activities you'll be able to engage with, right? Especially now we're finally back in person. And, uh, and this is, these are uh, these complementary studies and and uh, extracurricular activity is really great uh, for you to develop that breadth because uh, your depth is provided by well, your curriculum, well, what you're mostly here to do, right? So I want to give this link and, uh, and wherever you're accessing this, you should be able to access a slide deck as well. And uh, that's where this, there's a calendar that has all of the, uh, all of the different events that Lasang Hold is gonna be on there, right? And uh, the third perspective I want to share is about learning is more than just accumulating knowledge and skills, right? We're very much uh, used to think about learning in knowledge, which is what you know, skill, which is what you can do. But we don't think as much about uh, building our character, which is who you are, and relationship and community, which is who you are with, right? And uh, knowledge and skills we've already talked about a lot. So who you are or your character is, uh, your character is includes things that you value. And this is different for all of us, right? Some of us, and we 
value different things more or less. Some of us really value family, others really environment, or uh, more other of us uh, value more abstract, amorphous things like trust or a social cause that we are passionate about, right? And character is also about the way you think, feel, and act naturally. So you could be a very naturally curious person who likes to explore, or a uh, optimistic person who likes to cheer people up, or you're an extrovert who thrives in a crowd, or you're an introvert who prefers intimate conversations, right? And all of this makes us who, uniquely who we are, and that's our character. Some part of our character are genetic. There's no argument on that. That's, that's a part of the science, but science also shows, right? Much of our uh, character is developed through experience. And, and it's important to th not think about character as good and bad. There's not so many bad characters, right? If we think maybe uh, trait, a trait like psychopathy is not great, right? Don't, social paths are not great for society. But in general, regardless, whether we're extrovert or who likes the crowd or introvert who likes that intimate one-on-one -on -one conversation, we all bring something very different to society, right? And uh, we all bring something very unique to the world. And, uh, and, and what we're all different. And that is an awesome thing. At the same time, because what we value and our natural traits are different, they may clash. So there is a lot of learning about people and relationships that we need to do in order to actually work well together, in order to um, well, be well together. And, uh, and ultimately, this is uh, when we think about character, it's not about less about changing our character, more about a practice of active compassion and ethics and, and, uh, and well, how do we accept, appreciate, and work with people who are different from us? And how do we accept and value who we truly are? How do we even know who we truly are, right? And, uh, and character is developed through experience and reflection. So experience are, well, part of it is the knowledge and awareness that we build, right? So if you think about someone passionate about the environment, you wouldn't, if you don't know about the environment, you wouldn't, that wouldn't be a part of your character, right? That That's just a simple, simple, straightforward example, right? There's also people, uh, you know, who we meet changes us, right? We And uh, the conversations we had, and also the projects, the events, the experiences we've had, right? Hence, uh, experience. And, uh, and then reflection is really about, at a very meta level, critically think about our experience and, and by thinking about our experience, we learn, right? And this is, this is how our characters are developed. So a part of really, uh, I want to emphasize once again, is that we want to participate in experiential learning activities intentionally. And there, there's a lot of opportunity here at LaSalle for you to do that, right? Once again, uh, oh, I went too fast there, once again, and here's a link and, uh, and and you can get access to the slide deck to this this video as well. And uh, well, these actual curricular activities are great opportunities to develop your well rounded it. Remember Steve Jobs story? That's the source of inspiration for us, right? The final thing that it's, don't talk, we're not, we don't talk about a lot is relationship building and community building as a part of university learning, right? We all live in a society we're all dependent on each other, and really it's no one can do it alone. Often in university, particularly in a highly technical field, we get this sense it's me in my little world doing my own thing, right? And, uh, and, and we might get very stressed, uh, things might get tough, but it gets lonely. And, uh, and well, if we want to succeed in university, right? We want to be willing to give help to others and we want to be willing to ask for help, right? And the second thing I want to uh, stress, there are so many people, there are resources uh, at the university you can ask for help. There are, uh, there are your peers that you can ask for help, and your professors for sure, but definitely figure out who are the people you're able to lean on when things get tough. That's going to really help you succeed and thrive 
uh, in the university setting. And the same skill here is going to help you network. The help, same skill here is going to help you build your social and professional network. That's going to help you immensely uh, from a professional point of view. The fourth perspective I want to share is really this idea that university learning goes far beyond the university, right? All of us bring learning with us to the university. Uh, it's our knowledge, it's our skills, it's our lived experiences. And then we learn some things at university. And then finally, the learning continues for the rest of our lives. So this is the idea of lifelong learning, the idea that learning continues throughout our life and definitely beyond university in today's Tech, social, technolo technological, and economic environment, this is almost a necessity, right? Whether we're engineers or computer scientists, uh, these are fields that are constantly evolving and, uh, and we have to be able to learn continuously to keep up. But it's more than that, right? Society is evolving. Uh, more and more we're becoming aware of the complex the complex social challenges that we uh, we're experience, we see around us, right? How do we navigate that? How do we navigate that while fulfilling our professional responsibility? All of these things require us to learn continuously. And with that lifelong learning perspective, right, that we continue to learn, I wanna introduce the fifth perspective. And really it's, it's less about learning and it's more about it, what not to do. It's a bit of a warning, right? There is a cognitive bias. It's a well-known well cognitive bias called the Dunning-Kruger effect. And uh, so, so if you want to look at the diagram here, uh, x-axis is your level of learning and y-axis is your confidence. What happens very often, more often than not, is we have a tendency to, uh, to get very confident in our own level of expertise, knowledge and expertise in a particular area, when we started learning but learned very little, right? Maybe we like done half a course and suddenly we have this idea, we know everything. We know better than uh, others who's dedicated a decade to do this. And we see the kind of the, you know, uh, well, we can see some of the social factors the, in society, how certain people act, right? It's sort of like, uh, I, I, I've done two hours of research on the internet, therefore I know more than an expert who's done this for a decade, right? And, we, and, and people would argue very passionate about this. And uh, it's just a natural cognitive bias. Cognitive biases are something that well, is almost a slight faulty wiring in our brain in certain in certain situations because there's some advantage to that, right? But in most cases, we need to be aware of these cognitive bias. Um, and in this particular case, it really has to do with keep learning, right? And, and what all of us have to experience is when we learn more, we start to realize we don't know less. Because when we learn very little, right, we, you go, your confidence go up really quickly, and then you think you know everything. But you learn a little bit more, you start doubting yourself. And it's a healthy doubt here. It's a healthy doubt to say, maybe I don't know everything. And it's so important because I think the way to uh, work against or, or to counteract the Dunning-Kruger effect is to be humble. Right? I, I tend to tell my students in class these four things. Be respectful, be curious, be humble, be kind. Because Be humble because we don't know everything. Because we make mistakes and because we all have little blinders around our uh, eyesights, around our perspectives. Right? And, uh, and it reminds me of this very famous quote from Albert Einstein, the more I learn, the more I realize how much I do not know. With that, I want to once again welcome you to university. Uh, welcome to Lausanne, and uh, I wish you the best on your learning journey.